Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. Welcome to today's video where we'll be counting down 10 more busts from professional baseball. 10 names that sparked a ton of hype as they entered into professional baseball, but never panned out at the big league level. And I received a lot of great suggestions, but there are certain players who, while they certainly never lived up to the massive hype, still had solid MLB careers. Greg Jeffries, for example, was supposed to be a next level superstar, the next coming of Christ, but he was never that great. Still, he had a 14 year career. He made two all-star teams. He had a career 289 batting average. He even appeared on the 2006 Hall of Fame ballot and got two votes. So for the purposes of this list, that is not quite a bust. For me, a bust is a high draft pick, highly touted prospect who generates big hype and had a far less than average big league career if he made it to the big leagues at all. And a major bust certainly never made an all-star team. So let's get started with 10 more busts. Number 10, Bill Bene, pitcher. Back in the 80s, baseball cards of draft picks you really weren't a thing but this Bill Benny card was fairly hot for a while. Benny was taken fifth overall in the 1988 draft by the Dodgers, the same team that also drafted Mike Piazza that year with the 1,390th pick. They also took Eric Carros with pick 140. Luckily, both of them worked out. The same, unfortunately, cannot be said for Bill Benny, who had a lively arm that the Dodgers loved. Scouts saw his stuff and thought that he could be an elite arm, but just needed some professional coaching to improve his control, which was terrible in college. It was a huge gamble, and the Dodgers lost the bet. Benny did go 5-0 in his first professional season, but must have gotten some good run support because he walked 45 batters in 65 innings and gave up 33 runs for an ERA of 4.55. The next year in A-ball, the numbers started to become ridiculous and video game-ish in a bad way. In 27 innings, he did strike out 24 batters, but walked 56. His ERA ballooned up to 12.64. In 1990 at Vero Beach, things really got out of hand as he walked 96 batters in 56 innings. The run support was gone too as he went 1-10 with an ERA of 6.99. If Benny wasn't the fifth overall pick, he would have been released a long time ago. Instead, he came back year after year, showing some slight improvements here and there, but never being able to consistently command the zone whatsoever. In 1994, still in the Dodgers organization, he walked 49 batters in 50 innings with a 6.04 ERA strictly coming out of the bullpen at this point. Mercifully, the Dodgers released him. The Reds took a chance on him, but he walked nine batters and four innings in double A to end the experiment. He was out of baseball in 1996, but did make a comeback attempt in 97 with the Angels. And even at this point, he struck out 70 batters in 68 innings, but walked 66, going 0-4 with a 6.68 ERA. He was finally out of baseball, but continued to get busted even later in life, as he was arrested and sentenced to six months in jail in 2012, for operating a counterfeit karaoke business without paying taxes. Once a bust, always a bust. Number nine, Bubba Starling, outfield. A recent massive prospect, Bubba Starling, was a three-sport star and the number one baseball recruit in the nation back in 2011. He was seen as the most athletic player in the entire draft, and the Royals took him with the fifth overall selection, just ahead of Anthony Rendon, who the Nationals took at number six. Starling was also taken ahead of Francisco Lindor, Javi Baez, George Springer, and Brandon Nimmo in an extremely talented draft class. His minor league career was nothing special. In a full season in A-ball in 2014, he hit just 218 with eight home runs and 17 steals. Still, he slowly moved through the system, battling injuries at times, until finally making his big league debut in 2019, eight years after he was drafted. In 56 games, he hit 215 with four home runs and a 255 on base percentage. In the shortened 2020 season, he was even worse, hitting just 170 in 35 games. That offseason, he was non tendered by the Royals. Starling re signed a minor league deal for 21 and played his last year of professional baseball with AAA Omaha, hitting 258 with seven home runs before announcing his retirement from the game. Starling retired with a 204 MLB batting average. 
Number eight, Preston Mattingly, shortstop. The next bust was taken in the first round of the 2006 MLB draft by the Los Angeles Dodgers, and his name is Preston Mattingly. This six foot three, 200 pound power hitter, the son of should be Hall of Famer Don Mattingly, impressed scouts in high school with massive power, speed, and a great glove. Like his dad, he signed out of high school and went to the minor leagues where he hit 290 with a home run in rookie ball. 2007 with the Great Lakes Loons in A ball, he struggled, hitting just 210 with three home runs and 404 at bats. This wasn't a great sign for Mattingly's development, and he wasn't promoted to high A until 2009 when he hit just 238 with eight home runs despite 500 plus at bats. This was a situation where a player didn't get hurt, wasn't rushed to the big leagues, wasn't self-destructive, not addicted to drugs, he just couldn't hit well at the professional level. Perhaps as the son of Don Mattingly, he was overvalued. His last year was 2011, when he hit 232 with five home runs. He signed with the Yankees in 2012, but was released before the end of spring training. Mattingly, however, did return to college to play Division I basketball and was hired by the Phillies in 2021 to be their minor league director. Number seven, Ben McDonald, pitcher. Next up is a 6'7", 212-pound machine who led the 1988 U.S. Olympic baseball team to a gold medal and helped Louisiana State reach the College World Series twice. His name is Ben McDonald, and he was taken as the number one overall pick in the 1989 MLB draft and given a signing bonus of $350,000. Unfortunately, like many draft busts, he was rushed to the big leagues. McDonald pitched in only two minor league games in A-ball, throwing nine solid innings, allowing two runs and ten hits while striking out nine. It was a nice start to his minor league career, but certainly not enough to warrant an immediate call-up after just two minor league games. He was brought up anyway, and against major league hitting, the young prospect allowed seven runs in seven and a third innings while striking out just three. He had some moderate success the next year and eventually became part of the Orioles rotation but fell quite short of the hype, never making an all-star team and eventually retiring with a 78-70 record and 3.91 ERA. McDonald wasn't the most massive bust of all time, but as a number one overall selection, he still makes the list. Number six, Kiki Jones, pitcher. In the first round of the 1989 MLB draft, the Dodgers were fortunate enough to have three selections. Two of them, 22nd overall Tom Goodwin and 28th overall Jamie McAndrew, made it to the big leagues. The other pick, who was taken as the 15th overall selection, never did. His name, Kiki Jones. He was a high school phenom who struck out 100 batters in 61 innings with a 1.14 ERA. Baseball America named him the country's top high school prospect. In his first minor league season in the Pioneer League, he dazzled, going 8-0, with a 1.58 ERA, including two complete game shutouts. Instantly, Jones became one of MLB's hottest up-and-coming minor league prospects. Unfortunately, that was his last great season of pro baseball. The next year, after going 3-3 three three with Bakersfield in A-ball, Jones' season ended due to tendonitis. He made nine starts at Vero Beach in 1991, going 3-1 with a 4.1 ERA, but continued to struggle with injuries. In three starts in AA in 1993, Jones went 0-1 with a 4.5 ERA. His strikeout numbers were dropping off as well. By 1994, he was completely out of baseball. Jones made a comeback attempt in 1998 with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays organization, but was ineffective in three appearances in high A. His last hurrah was a brief run with the Rangers high A team in 2001 when he went 0-1 with an 18.69 ERA. Jones is one of the many sad stories of insanely talented young pitchers who get injured early in their minor league careers and are never able to make it to the big leagues. Number five, Calvin Murray, outfield. As a Giants fan long before the three World Series championships, I remember vividly the hype around an up-and-coming prospect named Calvin Murray. He was such a highly touted prospect that he was drafted in the first round not once, but twice first by the Cleveland Indians in 1989, then by the Giants in 92. After not signing in 89, Murray went to college at Texas and hit 351 with 47 stolen bases during his junior year. The Giants took him ahead of future superstars Jason Giambi and Johnny Damon. Murray was known as a guy who could fly, 
play elite defense, and hit for average. The Giants also thought that he could develop some big power. Unfortunately, while he certainly could run and play defense, he struggled to hit consistently at the professional level and lingered in the Giants' farm system for seven years. He did show improvement, however, and in 1998, he hit 293 between Double A and Triple A. He had his breakout minor league year in 99, when he hit 334 with 23 home runs and 42 stolen bases for the Fresno Grizzlies. Giants fans, myself included, thought that we had a future all-star who just took a little more time to develop than normal. Unfortunately, that year in AAA was the last time he would show this kind of talent. In 2000, he hit 242 with just two home runs for the Giants. In 2001, the Giants decided to put him in the lineup for an extended period and really find out what they had. He hit 245 with six home runs and 326 at bat. Certainly not horrible, but not particularly good either. The Giants traded him to the Rangers. He bounced around a bit for a few years and was out of baseball by 2006. Murray had a 231 career MLB batting average with eight home runs and 22 steals. He's a name I remember well because he was in the system for so long, but he never worked out at the big league level. Number four, Billy Bean. Outfield. One of the most famous busts in MLB history is Billy Bean, the man who went on to become the GM of the Moneyball era Oakland A's and who was portrayed on the big screen by one Brad Pitt. Before all of that, he was considered one of the top prospects in high school, a five tool talent who hit over 500 during his sophomore and junior years. Scouts projected him as a future superstar and it was the New York Mets who grabbed him in the first round of the 1980 MLB draft. The Mets also took two other players in the first round, Daryl Strawberry and John Gibbons, both of whom they put in rookie ball. As for Bean, he started in low A and hit just 210 with a home run. The next year he hit 268, but struck out 125 times in 403 at-bats. His trip through the system was slow. In 1983, while Strawberry was in his first MLB season, Bean was still in double A hitting 246 with 11 home runs. In 1984, again in double A, he performed well enough to finally earn a call up to the big leagues where he went one for 10. Despite another strong minor league season in 1985, the Mets seemed ready to move on from Bean and traded him to the Twins, who gave him his first extended shot in the big leagues. Bean hit just 213 with three home runs. He also played briefly for the Tigers and A's, never quite making it at the MLB level as a player. He found another path and has since become a successful baseball executive despite being one of the most noteworthy busts in MLB history. Number three, Eddie Bain, pitcher. Drafted in the first round out of Arizona State in 1973, Eddie Bain was considered a can't-miss pitching prospect, good enough in college to be elected into the College Baseball Hall of Fame. His college stats are insane, a 40-4 record with a 1.64 ERA. He broke and still holds the ASU strikeout record and also threw a perfect game. Bain also won a silver medal in the 1971 Pan American Games. Unfortunately, the Twins made the same mistake as the Rangers made with the first selection in the 73 draft, David Clyde. The Rangers promoted David Clyde directly to the big leagues, and the Twins did the same thing with Eddie Bain. He completely bypassed the minors, which of course is a recipe for disaster. Bain went 0-5 with the Twins with a 4.92 ERA. Like Clyde, he showed signs of brilliance and had a few good games here and there, but simply was not ready for the big leagues. So they put him in AAA for the next couple of years, where, after first getting used to life in the big leagues, he had to begin his minor league career. He was finally called back up in 75, started four games, and went 3-1 and one with a 2.86 ERA. But this would be his best season. The next year, Bain went 4-7 and seven with a 5.11 ERA and never pitched in the big leagues again. Bain showed massive potential throughout his pro career, but the mishandling of him by the impatient Twins front office was likely a major contributor in Bain never being able to really take off in the big leagues. Number two, Donovan Tate, outfield. In the 2009 MLB draft, the San Diego Padres had the third overall pick, and with it, they took Donovan Tate, a six foot three, 200 pound high school superstar. He was a five tool talent with insane speed, a powerful arm, and big stats. 
a 5-12 batting average and nine bombs his senior year, which led his team to the Georgia State Championship. The Padres snagged him, offering a $6.7 million bonus and taking him ahead of Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt, and Mike Trout. Unfortunately, the massive talent he showed in high school never translated to pro ball. In his first year, Tate hit 222 with two home runs and rookie ball. The next year, he played in only 39 games in A ball. Struggling with injuries such as a sports hernia, broken jaw, and a sprained shoulder. He also had problems with drug abuse, and in June of 2011, he was suspended and required to attend a drug treatment program. He stayed relatively healthy in 2012, but hit just 226 with a home run and 440 at bats in A ball. Tate stuck around that level through 2016, never making it to double A. The 26 year old retired from baseball and returned to college to play quarterback for the Arizona Wildcats. The Padres, especially during the 2000s, were known for poor drafting, but this may have been their biggest bust of all, as he never even made it past high A. Number one, Dustin Ackley. My number one bust in today's video is Dustin Ackley, who was drafted just before Donovan Tate, which makes him the second overall pick in the 2009 draft. Number one, by the way, was Steven Strasburg. Ackley was a fantastic college player who broke several North Carolina records, including 119 hits in a season, which he did in only 73 games. In his three college seasons, he hit 402, 417, and 417 respectively, with 22 bombs in his final year. He won multiple Player of the Year awards and was ranked as the number one college prospect in many publications, including Baseball America. He was considered the best and most professional ready offensive player in a draft that included the names I mentioned earlier, Arenado, Goldschmidt, and Mike Trout. The Mariners were confident enough in his abilities to agree to a five-year, $7.5 million MLB contract before he signed. His first full season in the minors was split between AA and AAA, and he hit 267 with seven home runs. Not terrible, but definitely not second overall pick numbers. He looked better in 2011, hitting 303 with nine home runs through 66 games, earning a promotion to the big leagues. He hit 273 with six bombs and would be a regular for the Mariners in 2012. Unfortunately, he wasn't that great, hitting just 226 with 12 home runs and an on-base percentage under 300. He ended up back in AAA for a portion of 2013, hitting well, but still struggling with consistency at the big league level. He had a few good streaks and definitely showed some potential from time to time, but would fall into prolonged slumps and never got close to becoming the player he was projected to be. Eventually, the Mariners dealt him to the Yankees, battled injuries there for two years, never contributing much, then signing with the Angels, where he stayed in AAA for two years. Finally, in 2019, the Mariners signed him to return to his original organization, but he was released during spring training. He ended up hitting 241 with 512 hits and over 2,000 big league at bats, which is why he didn't quite make my top 10 busts of all time. But given the fact that he was one of the most decorated college players ever, and he was hyped up to be the best offensive player available in the draft, he certainly earned bust status, in my opinion. And that does it for my video of 10 more busts, which is a follow-up to my top 10 busts of all time, which will be linked up above if you have not checked it out yet. If you have, I'll also link another video as well. Let's do the one on Matt Harrington, who may have been a bust, or maybe he would have been an all-star. We'll never know because he never signed, despite being drafted five times. So if you enjoyed this video, check out one of those or just hit that subscribe and thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and I'll talk to you next time.